What a nice introduction. Thank you so very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of doing this. Now, you know, dogs don't, I'm going to go kind of fast because this is a brief, brief talk. Dogs, of course, don't love COVID. I mean, you know, that's not what the suggestion here is, but what they love about it, at least a lot of dogs, is that we're home, in some cases, 24 seven. And what has made things more confusing since I first crafted this talk, I, I don't know, six months ago or so, and I thought, okay, in six months, we're gonna all be back to our usual schedule, but that hardly has happened for most of us. So some of us have gone out, we've gone back to work or gone to the office, and now we're back. And we're out, we're back, we're out, we're back. I mean, which is it? The dogs don't get an email to prepare them. They don't know why we're spending all this time there. Most of the dogs love it, that's for sure. They love spending time with us. But separation anxiety does seem to be, in fact, anecdotally, no data yet, but it does seem to be on the rise. Now, uh, this is going to be, we, three buckets that, that I'm concerned about watching dogs that fall into one of these three buckets. Dogs that previously suffered separation distress or separation anxiety in the past. Are they more likely to have it again? Well, even if they were treated successfully, probably the answer is yes. Shelter and rescue dogs. We do know that dogs that have been rehomed several different times are inherently more prone to have separation anxiety. It could be that dogs adopted from shelters are more prone for that too, or dogs in rescue. That we don't know. It could be that they were given up in the first place because they have separation anxiety. So it's kind of a chicken or an egg or a puppy or a dog thing, if you follow me. Uh, and also change can upset many of us, right? Well, some dogs, like some people, aren't very good with change. So if you could predict, and this may be difficult to do, if your dog is just not the kind of dog that does well with change, that individual dog may be more prone as well. Now, all of this has gone on at this point long enough where, as I said, some of us were home for months at a time, then went back to our usual schedules and are now home again. And you may have an inkling as to whether your dog has this problem or not. If so, we'll definitely talk about what to do about it. Be proactive, how to determine if your dog has separation anxiety in the first place. So go away, get out. Hard to do, I know, but just take a walk without the dog. Go anywhere for a minute, two minutes. Dogs that have separation anxiety usually express that anxiety within the first 15 to 30 minutes approximately of their people leaving, which includes the first two minutes. Uh, so if the dog is anxious, you'll know. Now, how do you know? The best way to know today, cameras. You know, we've got, we've got the ability to see what's going on just by using our phone. And, and there's an app in our phone for whatever camera system it is uh, for individuals or for veterinary professionals watching uh, or shelter professionals, any clients. Uh, the phones are pretty inexpensive now. I didn't mean to say the phones, they're really expensive. Uh, but what I meant to say is the cameras, which the app is on the phone, they are pretty inexpensive, relatively speaking, uh, to what they were just even a year ago. Uh, have at least one camera and have it pointed at the door that you left from. You have more than one camera because a lot of systems allow that. That's great. That's fine. Uh, toss some treats that you know your dog really, you know your dog really likes. Heavy artillery treats. Uh, around. And if you come home after two minutes or three minutes and, and the dog has not scarfed up those treats, that at least, it doesn't tell you the dog has separation anxiety, but it's certainly a red flag that the dog may have separation anxiety. Watching the dog ideally in the camera, that's the best way. And, and what you can do is you can, for most of these systems, save the video, show a veterinary professional what it looks like. And here's why I say that. The dog could be bored. So the dog could be pacing, could be doing things that dogs that have separation anxiety do, but it could be out of boredom rather than anxiety. So the dog could be tearing up the pillow because the dog is simply bored and doesn't have other outlets. Enhanced enrichment, by the way, for that. Dogs that are truly under-exercised. I mean, dogs that just don't have, again, an outlet, not a mental outlet as in the first bullet point, 
here a physical outlet and they are more likely to wreak havoc given the opportunity. A uh, dog who is simply never taught to be home alone. We have all these pandemic adopted dogs. We don't know what their history is. So maybe that dog was never taught to be home alone rather than having true separation anxiety. Is the dog truly house trained? Again, you're adopting a dog from a shelter situation. Maybe the dog is unlearned house training if the dog was house trained even in the first place. Uh, territorial or self-reinforced barking. Here's what I mean. It's assumed by neighbors in, in apartment buildings or condos uh, that the dog is barking at the window or maybe you're seeing it on camera. It's assumed, well, that dog has separation anxiety. The dog is barking at the window. Well, the dog is barking at the window, but it may be because the dog is just territorial. It could be that the dog is a terrier. You know how terriers are. Now I'm gonna hear from anyone who's ever had a terrier, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, and it could be habit, you know, dog barks at the uh, UPS guy, UPS guy drops off the package and goes away. Dog's perspective is, I bark, I made him go away. Woo, -hoo! that was fun. So does that dog have separation anxiety? No, that dog doesn't. Uh, in older dogs, it could be cognitive dysfunction syndrome, uh, which is, sort of a version of Alzheimer's in dogs. Uh, it could be separation distress, but not caused by what we typically think about, but rather caused uh, by age and changes in the brain. Uh, some of the solutions for separation distress for that dog are different and some are the same, in fact. So separation anxiety in dogs, what are we looking at? We're looking at these things. I'm not gonna rattle off, you can see what's on here. And, and you probably know this, you know, I mean, this destructing things when you come back in the house. You see the pillow is, feathers are all over the place, flying everywhere, you have to get out the vacuum cleaner. And then the dog acts guilty. Is that dog really guilty? No, incidentally, that dog is just responding to your response when you walk through the door. So how do we determine if dogs have separation anxiety? Well, there is kind of a good housekeeping sort of uh, You've seen those magazines, they have these quizzes, right? It's that kind of quiz at this website that can give you some idea as to whether the dog has separation anxiety. As I talked about, a camera is the best way to tell and showing a professional. I, I mentioned veterinarian. It could be a veterinary technician, uh, particularly one certified in behavior. It can be a certified animal behavior consultant such as myself, but showing someone who understands what separation anxiety truly looks like. Now, what do you do about it if it is separation anxiety? Well, there are lots of behavior modification sorts of things that you can do uh, in of themselves. They can work, they cannot work. The problem is uh, the person, and many of you know, if you have a dog with separation anxiety, first of all, your heart is breaking for that dog. But secondly, you may be under pressure from a landlord or someone else to do something about it really soon. So the behavior modification can work. Note I said can work really, really well, but it takes a while. So I'm gonna go through some of the things that you can do. One is called graduated departures, where, let me back up to the beginning, actually the slide. So it says eradicate cues. I wanna start there. So here's what happens. Uh, your dog knows you're leaving, right? If your dog has separation anxiety, you know that your dog at least believes that he or she knows when you're leaving. Uh, picking up on all sorts of cues, uh, whether it is you grabbing a purse or whether even before that, we don't even understand everything they pick up on. So sometimes it isn't only you grabbing a purse, putting on your shoes, putting on a winter coat where I live. It, it can be even an hour before. You know, I mean, I've, I've talked to many people who say, oh, my brother just called and asked me to come over and the dog already is begun to pace. How does my dog know? And we don't know the answers to all those things, probably having to do with our neurochemicals. I, 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 I don't wanna even go down that route, but if we can eradicate some cues, we want to do that. So here's what I want you to do. Think of your best, your the actor that you most admire or actress uh, and, and you think should have won that Academy Award in 2016 or whatever, that person. 
So for you ladies, be Meryl Streep. I don't know for the guys who that might be necessarily, uh, Robert De Niro. And I want you to be the best actor you can be. You are leaving the house. You do everything you do when you leave the house. Indeed, you do leave the house. Ignore the dog or toss some treats for the dog if you want. Leave for 20 seconds. Then come back nonchalantly. Just sit down, turn on the TV, read a book, make a phone call, whatever you want to do. Answer email. Then five minutes later, do it again. Five minutes after that, do it again. Keep doing it. And, and over time, you're leaving for a longer period of time. Those are called graduated departures. And, and that can help, note I said can help, a lot of dogs. Every dog is different, of course. And for separation anxiety, it's one of those issues where uh, there is no one magic answer. There is no silver bullet. And what works for one dog really, really well can work for the second dog adequately well and not at all work for the third dog. It, it really depends on all sorts of different circumstances. So what we do is we throw things at it and see what sticks. So I'm gonna talk about some of what you can throw at the problem. Adaptil is a pheromone product. It can be a collar that goes around your dog's neck or it's a plug-in. For dogs that are generally anxious, and lots of dogs with separation anxiety incidentally are, and or have other anxieties, by the way, which I'll talk about, uh, this can be great to just tone down the anxiety level. It's natural, it's a pheromone or a copy of a pheromone. So when dogs nurse puppies, when they're very, very young, there's a pheromone, a calming pheromone in that milk, and that's what this is a copy of, that calming pheromone. Calming care is a probiotic. And who knew, and I've got a little asterisk next to it because it's a fairly new product and a lot of people don't know about it. Who knew that uh, a nutritional supplement, a probiotic can actually help calm dogs. But we know now that in human beings, interesting Purina came up with it because it's the Nestle part of the company that did the work in humans. Uh, and what we know is that our gut and our brain talk to one another. You know, before you make a big speech, right? That your tummy may get a little nervous. So it's the same thing with dogs. They're wired the same way. And, and this is why not try it kind of thing for a lot of these. Now I wouldn't try every one of these. That's overdoing it. And you're saying, I don't want you to spend money you don't need to spend, but talk to a professional and choose a couple of these that seem to make sense Again, for your dog, for your lifestyle. Thundershirt, anxiety wrap, storm defender. They are all things the dog wears to help, to create sort of a swaddling effect uh, to increase comfort. Now, having said that, we have, for example, a dog that has a bit, because we're dealing with it, so it, it's not much at this point, separation anxiety. You put a sweater on our dog and she doesn't like it. We put it on because she's a very small dog to go out and I'm working on it the best I can. I give her treats every time she gets that sweater on. But to leave her alone with that sweater on, she wouldn't like it. Again, what works well for one dog doesn't always work well for another dog. Thunder shirts, anxiety wraps, and storm defenders aren't sweaters, but they are things that dogs wear that hopefully help to ease the anxiety. Thunder ease is uh, the thunder shirt with adaptal infused in it. So it's the best of both worlds, if you will. Zentral is a nutraceutical product that helps to minimize that anxiety just a bit. Zilkeen is the same sort of thing, uh, which is a milk-based or a copy of a milk-based product that helps lower the anxiety. There's no downside to using Zilkeen or Zentral, except you're spending the money to do it, but there's no other downside to that. And Zilkeen in particular, has quite a few studies that indicate, yes, this product really does work. CBD, that's the thing, should be at the top of the list because that's what I'm asked about the most these days. Uh, does it work? I don't know. You know, the, the only studies that I know of uh, for CBD have to do with dogs with seizures that have been peer reviewed and published. Uh, and it's positive by the way, but we don't know if it works for separation anxiety. 
We don't know if it works for behavior problems. Anecdotally, for some dogs, it does. Not all CBD products are the same. So please talk to your veterinarian and in some places in this country, right, wrong, or otherwise, your veterinarian can't even answer the question because of legal constraints. Uh, but please try to do your homework because again, I cannot stress, for example, there are some CD, CBD products, if you look at the label, they have a trace amount of arsenic. I don't care if it's a trace amount. Why choose that product? And that doesn't seem to be good for dogs. Um, and there are psychopharmaceuticals, which I'll touch on in a little bit as well. And those are the heavy big guns that truly work. But you need to talk with a veterinarian or a veterinary behaviorist about what is specifically the right one for your dog. So it may stick, it may not stick, some of these things. Psychopharmaceuticals we know work. The importance of this is we know separation anxiety is a uh, reason for relinquishment, actually a somewhat common one. So this is a life and death situation for a lot of dogs. And this is when I heard, why I heard about the calmer canine, I was so excited because here's a product that uses something that we've not even thought about before. And that is electromagnetic frequencies uh, to help calm the dogs. What am I talking about? Well, it turns out when you're anxious, same is true for our dogs, the amygdala front lobe of the brain swells a little bit. And lowering that swelling, by the way, encourages neurochemicals we want, like serotonin and dopamine, as opposed to cortisol, the ones we don't want. So it does a couple things all at once, and it does so in a way that is non-invasive, if you will, and with any, uh, without any known side effects or adverse responses at all, at all, at all, at all. And that is a good thing. This is one of the two I call big guns. The other is drugs, psychopharmaceutical products, which I will say nothing bad about. Um, you need the right combination. You need the right mix for the right dog, et cetera. Some people don't want to give their dogs drugs. So for all those folks that don't want to, this is a great option and it works. You know, there's lots of science and I'll talk about that in a second to indicate uh, how it works and, and the fact that sending these electromagnetic signals, really it's like, woo, what? <laughs> it really, it really does work. So here's what is done and here's how it works. It's two 15 minute sessions a day. Uh, it can be uh, handheld. That's what it looks like. That's what the device looks like, by the way. So you could hold it over your dog, the little halo part of it, or, or the dogs can wear it. Comes in a couple different sizes as do dogs. Uh, so you choose the size that is right for your dog, obviously. And it attaches like a harness does. In fact, it is a harness. Uh, the treatments are done, uh, obviously, when the person's home, either which way. Uh, the treatment can take anywhere from about four to six weeks, but anecdotally, many, 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 many people have said, oh my gosh, it's one week, I've already seen an improvement. Uh, hopefully one treatment course, but for some dogs, a small percent uh, need more than that, um, a longer treatment or a second treatment, either which way. So calmer canine uh, reduces the signs of separation anxiety. There have been a couple studies done at this point in time, st statistically significant reduction in signs of canine separation anxiety uh, in dogs left alone, uh, according to owner questionnaires. All dogs showed improvement ranging from a resolution of 50%, which is measurable. I mean, that matters. Uh, too much greater than that. Lasting effects in most dogs, again, without any side effects whatsoever. So the only downside is you tried it and it didn't work, I guess, but I've not heard from a single person that's tried it and has said that yet. That's just my anecdotal ears. So let me give you an example. I've got many videos like this. I just don't have the time to show them all. So Elliot's a three and a half year old beagle. Who is not happy with being left home alone? You're gonna see uh, Elliot do what beagles do, but this beagle doesn't stop doing it and that's howling. 
a lot of vocalization. Oh, by the way, on the floor, do you see what's there? All those Kongs spread throughout the room with treats inside, a beagle not caring about that. And you could see poor Elliot's expressing anxiety by tearing up the bed and continuing to howl. So Elliot is clearly expressing separation anxiety. I'm gonna forward this just a little bit here. So after, oh, we can't see all the data because I've got the stuff hiding it. Okay, so one month later, okay, I'll settle for this one month later. So before, uh, Elliot was not resting at all, virtually 24% of the time, 80% of the time when people left one month later. Uh, previously whining, you saw the howling 71% of the time. Uh, let me go back here. And 15% of the time, one month later, which is more typical for beagles. Uh, for other dogs, of course, a bit less than that. Well, okay. I thought I had two. Oh, my goodness. Hold on here. Um, Okay, thought I had another video in there, uh, but I don't see it. I could show you many, many, many videos and you'll get this, it's the same thing over and over and over. It's the same before and after with similar types of numbers that we saw uh, in Elliot. And there's one in particular, I think it's a poodle, where, where the dog is just like, oh, I'm in a spa. After the people leave, it's hard to believe it's actually the same dog. Now. Can you use a lot of what I've talked about with calmer canine? Absolutely. Adjuncts such as pheromone products, such as nutraceutical products, such as uh, the probiotic. Uh, you could use all of that sort of thing or any combination. And that can be helpful, by the way, to anecdotally to speed things up. The studies were just done on this alone though, and that's all. Uh, calmer canine. Uh, here, I describe them as, don't they look like little angels wearing those little halos? For uh, help with dogs with separation anxiety, rather than randomly go to places uh, and hope that person really is who they say they are on their website. Um, am I breaking up a little bit? Hmm, this is hardwired, that's not supposed to happen or I guess I'm not hardwired at the moment, I don't know. International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, that is the website, American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior, Diplomates of the American College of Veterinary Behaviorists. That's me! And I hope you find me on Facebook and like my fan page and all that stuff. Uh, I hope I've done, and by the way, decoding your dog there, which I had the opportunity to write the forward to and co-edit authored by members of the American College of Veterinary Behaviors. Uh, that book has an entire chapter on uh, separation anxiety. In addition to that, Decoding Your Cat uh, is out right now. I wrote the foreword to that. Uh, I was honored to do so. Authored by members of the American College of Veterinary Behaviors. 